What what do you guys say no to? And not material wise, but is there shows that you say no to? Are there situations like maybe not even show like podcasts that, that you'll say? Is there stuff that you will say no to? Um, I would say no to a podcast or, or a situation where I knew that there were where the racial slurs and uh -huh. things were being. I won't. I won't be party to that. What about unpaid shows? Do you guys say no in, at this point where you guys are credible comedians? Do you say no to unpaid shows? Let's are like in your backyard kind of deal. I was about to say it has to be in my backyard. Okay. And not on Friday or Saturday. And not on a Friday or Saturday. Um, or, or if it's a charity event. Okay. Yeah. Like if somebody has a charity event on a Thursday night, uh -huh. I, like I'll say yes to that. Um, I don't, I don't. Again, when I started this uh -huh. whole comic thing, I was a mom with a full-time job. Uh -huh. I didn't have the ability to just drive and go to an open mic or go drive and do things like that. So I've, I've always kind of had to be careful of what I could say yes to. Uh -huh. Yeah, un, I mean, unpaid, definitely, unless I'm specifically, I know that I'm going to be able to do stuff uh -huh. with no consequences. So that's... A gig like I'm working for free is when I'm going to break out the stuff that I, I don't do normally that, uh -huh. you know, harder, harder subject matter. So they can be fun. Um, bringers. I'm never doing any bringers. Yeah. Uh, you know, never, never, just never bringers. That's is pretty it, much it. And then like bar comedy can get kind of sketchy sometimes, yeah. but I always take the gigs, but I always know going in, I should have said no. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about bars. Uh, Some of these gig salad requests, they'll be like a wedding from like two years from now. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm going to commit to a wedding from two years from now? Yeah. You know, it's like, no. You know, or sometimes it'll be like, oh, we, we want you to talk about this certain thing. And I'm like, that's not for me. Like, have you watched any of my video clips? Like, that's not me. You know, so like a lot of things I'm just not going to take, you, even if they're offering me money, because I'm just like, it's going to be a disaster. Okay. You know? Okay. Or like, um, or like if someone wants me to come out to fucking middle of nowhere and like, you know, and there's like no pay. Yeah. Or it's like, I'm past that. Like, yeah. I'm not driving yeah. an hour to, you know, so for no pay. Yeah. You know? No, I get that. I mean, obviously, if it's like, obviously, it's like Dave Chappelle needs an opener, but you're not yeah. getting paid. Yeah, it's a different thing. <laughs> you know? Like, like you want to come do my mic, you know, and a fucking um, po poetry open mic that comes on first? <laughs> Um, right now, I'm saying no to indoor shows. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I wish I was as... Uh, I, uh, what do I say no to? Um, yeah, well, I, I did get asked to, to, to do something, um, you know, in the COVID era, and I, mm -hmm. I, it just doesn't feel right doing it. But uh, but in a, in a normal uh, set of circumstances, um, uh, man, how do I... Um, you know, I, I, hmm. I, I, I don't really like, um, you know, like, whoop, like, we're, hey, we're doing this. I, I know what I say no to. I say no to shows um, that have like seven or eight comics on the bill. Uh -huh. um, I, I just, that, you know, I, I call them like clown card shows. I mean, because they just one more just keeps on like, you know, falling out at the, yeah. you know, at this interminable <clears throat> pace. And, um, and and if it's a case where there's like, you know, eight got, you know, and it's not because I, um, I just don't like, you know, high volume, you know, low reward shows yeah. like that. Okay. I don't know if it harmed or hurt me. I said no to these virtual comedy shows during COVID. Um, any chance to get in front of an audience, and the larger the audience, the better. And I'll tell you, um, any chance to get in front of an audience, for the most part, I'm going to say yes to. I've been doing it long enough now that I need to see some kind of return. When I mean return, um, sometimes it may not be money. Sometimes it may be 
a chance to audition for someone who's going to get me something bigger. Uh huh. Um, but a chance to get in front of an audience, uh, I'm a sucker for it. Um, but I also got to remember my value and worth. And with that being said, I got I got to take that compromise and find a happy medium. But I said no to the virtuals. I don't like I said I don't know if that harmed or hurt me. But if there's a chance to get in front of an audience, great. If there's a chance to make money, great. But I also look at audiences like this. You ne and I always say this to myself. You never know who's in the audience and what can come of it. Because I've had shows where I've gotten done and someone came up to me and goes, hey, we own, we own a bar. Or hey, we, I, I'm the president of um, a motorcycle club and we wanted, or I'm, you know, we're looking for something for a fundraiser for our kid. You never know. So like you could go to a show if you made money, great. But you never know who's in that audience and what it could lead to. I mean, some of my best gigs, whether they were paying or whether they were opportunities, came from just getting an opportunity to be in front of someone, let them see and go, oh, wow, we, were like, we like that. So uh, a live audience is what I strive for. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you never know, you never know what, where a gig can take you. Very true, very true. Uh, well, this is a hard thing right now. Mm -hmm. um, in general, before all of this, uh, I generally said no to outdoor shows. Okay. Because outdoor shows are, and I haven't yeah. done any yet just because I'm a bit of a germaphobe. I'm not ready to jump right back in. But yeah. um, I usually say no to um, to outdoor shows. And uh, uh, I try to avoid, not always, but I try to avoid free comedy shows. I don't mm -hmm. like doing money okay but, uh i want a crowd there who's paid to be there they have a vested interest they have respect for the comedy they've paid even if it's five dollars mm -hmm. they've paid some money they want to laugh yeah if it's just a show obviously open mics are different but if it's just a show where it's like hey it's a free bar show yeah i i, just, I don't like to do those because i feel like i don't feel like dealing with a crowd of anybody who can wander in or out and don't have a vested interest in the show. So I, I try to avoid those shows. Okay. Cool. Thank you. That's a, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question because that's really a tough thing to decide. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and the, the really, the really, the really harsh truth about that is that if you never start saying no to things, then you'll never really, people will never really treat you for what you're worth. Uh -huh. If they don't know that you're a person that could uh -huh. and would say no. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so you have to, you have to have that as a part. You have, you have to be that, you have to be willing to say no uh -huh. in order to get what you're worth. And in order to, to be willing to know, to say no in order to get what you're worth, you have to know uh -huh. what you're worth. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so it's, it's really, really difficult. And not until I think maybe one or two years ago uh -huh. did I really start saying no. For me, for, yeah. for me, certain, certain venues, of course, I can't say no to, you know, the Laugh Factories, the Gotham's, the, uh, uh -huh. the, uh, the Carolines, even the Helium's and the uh -huh. Punchlines. You know, I, 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 I can't, I can't really say no to yet. Yeah. Uh, I'll, eventually, I'll get to a place where I can say, if I'm not getting paid a certain amount, uh -huh. then I can't do this comedy club. Uh -huh. But most of the time, nine times out of ten, comedy clubs, comedy clubs, I pretty much do. Now, not everything. Now, not everything I promote, uh -huh. of course. Uh -huh. There's very little, very very little that I promote. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that that's a different that's a different conversation. Okay. But but um, so it has so most of the times it's not a comedy club. Most of the times it's things that comedians or people who 
don't really don't don't really know as much about comedy or aren't comedians and mm -hmm. just want to do events and stuff. Uh, those 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 are the things that I say no to. Okay. And and uh, some of them I do, but so, but a lot of them I don't. Okay. A lot a lot of them I don't do because because uh, I need to be headlining them uh -huh. in order in order to feel like it's worth my time. I okay. need to be I need to be either headlining them or um, getting paid a certain amount. Yeah. In order for me to feel like it's worth my time. And the, it, it's it's just it just simply comes down to the fact that I could be doing something else. I could mm -hmm. be doing something else with my time. And not not only that, but I can't be seen mm -hmm. as someone who's as someone who's opening for this other person. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, what I'm saying? I get it. Yeah. Like, I can't I can't let a flyer be online <laughs> with me host with me hosting or opening up for this other person. <laughs> so yeah. if if it's not a person that's headlining comedy clubs, mm -hmm. yeah. Then why then 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 there's there's then you're you're somebody who just simply doesn't know who you're talking to. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. What do you say no to as far as shows or things like this or like what are what are some things that now in this stage of your career that you say I'm not doing these kind of things anymore? Well, I don't know, man. I mean, it's like it's all like shit like this is cool and different. You know, I I, I would say this. I feel like at, at this point. I don't think like I don't think I necessarily want to chase shows like if I have two sh not that I would say no to necessarily anything other than like just never wanted to do a Zoom show I don't yeah. feel like that's not my thing that's a good writer uh -huh. maybe but not for my type of entity I I think um I think more than saying no, it's like at this point, I'd rather like instead of like chasing the money for a show or chasing, like if I had a date come up where I'm like, all right, this show pays well, but I also have this show over here I could do the same day, mm -hmm. doesn't pay anything, but the experience will way outweigh the other show. I'd like to lean towards the show with the experience, you know? Okay. So, but now, I mean, I, but, but if that's the only show there is, and it still pays shit, I'll still take that, because I'd rather do that than do nothing. Okay. And uh, I just, you know, I just feel like all these different experiences are all part, part of it in the long run. Like, dude, Dave Chappelle was taking a fucking hand speaker and microphone out there, like, Portland and like doing uh, jokes just out in the middle of a park. It's like, <laughs> you can't tell me that didn't make him better at some point somehow. You know? so, so if I asked you to do a show in the basement of a winery where they're producing the wine and there's dirt floors and there's dehumidifiers running, you'd be okay with doing it? <laughs> I think I think that's the only time I remember looking in your eyes and you regretting getting into this with me. I remember you just looking around. I remember talking to you and just I felt like this is just white noise hitting. Like you're just assessing the situation like a bomb went off and you're seeing who's still alive at this point. You're just like looking around. I'll never forget that look in your eyes and you know, forever. You know what? I will say this. Because well see you know what the thing is is like it does get to a certain point where like, you know, in the beginning, like you you'll take any show and it's like the production quality of the show could not be great, but you're still so proud to be mm. a part of it. <clears throat> and I don't want to take anything because those I feel like those shows still need to exist. Yeah, like the, the type of production quality shows still need to exist. But at some point, like as you get older and you're more in it and you know better, you kind of have to feel bad for the audience. So, <laughs> I'm really sorry. About this. Like, 
<laughs> it, it just like because we're all back to it right now yeah. it's like we're back in this where it's like it's the wild wild west where it's like we could do a highly produced show one night or the next night we could just be in a field with lanterns and, <laughs> and it's all over the place right now which is because of where we're at all of them come out with a different experience but it is a little weird. Sometimes I feel bad for like customers now because I'm like, <laughs> "Are you paid for this?" I'm so far. Yeah, it's very thoughtful of you. <laughs>